so I can't remember the last time I watched the Olympics. I think it was um, never. I don't think I ever watched an Olympic event all the way through. I don't find it entertaining or interesting even in the slightest, but that's just me. However, I had enjoyed some of the winter game events in the past, but it's been more than a decade since I've had any interest in those events. Anyway, recently, there was a performance during the opening ceremony of the Paris Olympics. And let me just pull up this article here. Santa Claus added to Iowa town's nativity scene after a complaint from atheist group. Oh, wait. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Wrong article. Here we go. Mardi Gras 2024 power outage in New Orleans leads to crew of Bacchus delay. A power outage in New Orleans caused the crew of Bacchus to be delayed on Sunday, February 11th. According to a social media post from Nola Reddy, the crew of Bacchus parade was delayed until power could be restored. Oh, wait, I did it again, didn't I? We're supposed to be talking about the Olympic opening ceremony, right? Okay. Again, sorry. Controversial Olympics opening ceremony. Misunderstood Bacchanal or blasphemous Last Supper. The Paris Olympics opening ceremony has sparked significant controversy following a performance by drag queens that many interpreted as depicting Jesus Christ's Last Supper. The scene in question featured a performer painted blue and surrounded by fruit, which some viewers saw as a parody of Leonardo da Vinci's iconic painting, where Jesus shares his final meal with his 12 apostles. The portrayal led to widespread outrage on social media, with numerous individuals accusing the performers and the Olympic organizers of mocking Christianity. However, Others have clarified that the performance was not intended to represent the Last Supper. Instead, it was meant to depict an ancient Greek Bacchanal, a Roman festival honoring Bacchus, the god of wine and revelry. Bacchanalia, as these festivals were also known, have their origins in Greek Dionysian festivals, which celebrated Dionysus, the god of wine and ecstasy. Johnny Grimes, a Birmingham business owner and a graduate school attendee, was among those who clarified the performance's actual context. He posted a Facebook explaining, The scene in question was not a depiction of the Last Supper, but rather an ancient Greek bacchanal. The choice reflects the Olympics' historical roots in ancient Greece. A bacchanalia is a celebration honoring Bacchus, the god of wine, also known as Dionysus, in Greek mythology. These festivals were characterized by their exuberance and festivities, often lasting for several days. And Mr. Grimes, you are wrong. You need to get your money back for the school you're going to. Other social media users echoed this clarification, emphasizing that the performance had no relation to the Last Supper. One user Arthur P. Correll humorously noted, it took me a hot minute to figure it out, okay? Like a day. But this is a Bacchanal. Papa Smurf, there is Bacchus. The entire internet can stop clutching their collective pearls. It has nothing to do with the Last Supper and everything to do with Greece. And no, Mr. P. Correll, you are wrong too. Yes, it is Bacchus, and it has everything to do with Greece. And it has a lot to do with the Last Supper. Sorry. Well, folks, we have quite a bit to discuss here. Want to see how deep this rabbit hole gets? Well, stay tuned.
so I see that it finally took the Olympic Games for people to wake up to what's been going on for centuries, actually. I've already talked about and explained this deity, Dionysus, Bacchus, the god Saturn, Santa Claus, and I'll link those videos for you. So what I want to do in this video is explain to everyone again what this is all about. And I want you all to have a clear understanding of the history involved with this so that you can better understand why this opening ceremony seemed like some weird concoction of a presentation. And I hope that I can cover all the points that I want to cover in this video. So let's start with the obvious. Yes, this was indeed a mock-up of Leonardo da Vinci's painting of The Last Supper for obvious reasons. The positioning of the table and the party sitting behind it, the halo over the center figure's head and during the Olympic ceremony is enough confirmation of what this is supposed to represent. But this opening ceremony scene is the antithesis of what the Last Supper was. During the Last Supper, Jesus shared bread and wine with his disciples, symbolizing his body and blood. The act became the foundation for the Christian sacrament of the Eucharist, where wine represents the blood of Christ. And we all know that France is the country of wine. Actually, many wine festivals and celebrations around the world feature Bacchus. Bacchus, or Dionysus in Greek mythology, is the god of wine, and wine plays a central role in his worship and the rituals associated with him. Wine was seen as a divine gift that could bring ecstasy and communion with the divine. The Last Supper became a model for Christian communal worship and the Eucharistic celebration. Rituals in honor of Bacchus often involved communal feasting and drinking, fostering a sense of community and shared ecstasy among participants. Jesus' words during the Last Supper focused on the transformative nature of his sacrifice. The myths of Bacchus also involve themes of death and rebirth. Bacchus himself is a symbol of life, death, and rebirth, as he was believed to die and be reborn. The consumption of wine in his rituals symbolized participation in this cycle of transformation. Are you with me so far? Let's keep in mind, folks, that artists throughout history have sometimes drawn visual and thematic parallels between Christian and pagan imagery. In some Renaissance and Baroque artworks, the Last Supper and scenes of Bacchic revelry are depicted with the themes of communal feasting and divine presence. Now, Bacchanalia existed for a long time before the Last Supper actually took place. So this mixture of Christian and pagan ideas has existed for a very long time and still does, as you can see. You know, I saw a church leader talking about how this opening ceremony at the Olympics was blasphemous. And I said to myself, wait a minute, the opening ceremony? What about the whole dang Olympics? The ancient Olympic Games were rooted in Greek culture and were held in Olympia in honor of Zeus, the chief deity of the Greek pantheon. The Games begin in 776 BCE and included athletic competitions, religious ceremonies, and cultural events. They were held every four years and were one of the most important Hellenic events, so they could bring unity to the Greek city-states. So, unless Christians worship Greek gods, why are they participating or observing the Olympics in the first place? Nobody wants to bring that up. The Olympic Games always had a strong ritualistic component. They begin with religious ceremonies, including sacrifices to Zeus and other gods, and were accompanied by feasts and celebrations. The athletic competitions themselves were seen as a form of offering to the gods and a demonstration of physical excellence. 
So when you see Bacchus at a Greek god celebration, that shouldn't surprise you because Dionysus is part of that Greek pantheon of gods. And the true God does not want any of you to worship or celebrate any other God but him. And many people may not know this, but drag queens are a part of Bacchanalia or the celebration of Bacchus or Dionysus. In the festivals and rituals dedicated to Dionysus, there were instances of men dressing as women and women dressing as men. Dionysus himself was a god associated with fluidity and transformation, including the blurring of gender boundaries. A lot of people don't know that. The followers of Dionysus, particularly the maenads, female followers and satires, male followers, often engaged in ecstatic rituals that included cross-dressing and other forms of role reversal. That was their thing. You see, the Bacchanalia were known for their subversive nature, breaking down social hierarchies and norms. This would have included challenges to traditional gender roles, potentially through cross-dressing and other forms of theatrical expression. The first Bacchanalia was celebrated in secrecy by women only. Then later men joined the party. They would do this multiple times throughout the year, engaging in drunken orgies, animal sacrifices, and only God knows what else. These parties got so out of control, the Roman government had to make laws to regulate it. Bacchus, the Roman god of wine, revelry, and fertility, is celebrated in various places around the world, particularly in regions with rich wine traditions and historical connections to Roman and Greek mythology. Italy, France, Spain, Germany, Greece, all honor and celebrate Bacchus and the United States. Every year in New Orleans, there is Mardi Gras and every year they honor and celebrate Bacchus with the crew of Bacchus, one of the most famous parades during Mardi Gras. It features elaborate floats, music, costumes, and revelry. Drunken, horny people all over the place. They have Bacchus Bash in Florida, which is a large food and wine festival that celebrates Bacchus. And many people don't know this, but pay close attention. For a few people, Bacchus is secretly a symbol for how should I put this? Adults who like children in a bad way. Speaking of the welfare of children, I see Christians or people who claim to be Christian. After this Olympic debacle, they will still go and celebrate Halloween. They will still go and celebrate Easter and Christmas. Who do you guys think Santa Claus is? Notice during the Olympic opening drag show, the red and white colored table. Bacchus is the god of wine, festivity, and ecstasy. Celebrations in his honor were characterized by joyous revelry, feasting, and a sense of communal merriment. The modern figure of Santa Claus has roots in various traditions, including the Christian Saint Nicholas, as well as older pagan winter solstice celebrations that involved feasting, gift giving, and merriment. And what do a lot of people do during Christmas? Well, they like to party and get drunk. In mythology, Bacchus or Dionysus is often associated with themes of transformation and liberation from ordinary constraints. His followers experienced a sense of freedom and ecstasy during the Bacchanalian rites. The figure of Santa Claus can be seen as a transformative and liberating presence, especially for children. He brings magic, wonder, and a break from the ordinary routines of life through the enchantment of Christmas. They just happen to both have a beard. 
that is a well-known characteristic of both. They are both connected to nature and the seasons, the Yule log and the evergreen tree. They have roots in older nature-based solstice celebrations. Get this, Saint Nick, Saint Nicholas. Did you know that he is also the saint of brewers? He was the saint of beer, which back then was a common beverage and a common gift to give to others because, you know, clean water was hard to come by back then in those areas. Actually, Saint Nicholas is the patron saint of various groups, including children, sailors, merchants, and brewers. Saint Nicholas feast day is celebrated on December 6th. In some European countries, this day involves festive traditions that include feasting and drinking. I'm sorry for lecturing, but I want you to understand this so when it comes up in conversation, you'll know what you're talking about. Because if you are a Christian, a true Christian, you should be against anything that has to do with other gods. Yes, this opening ceremony was weird, gross, and disgusting, but the first time people saw them perform a drag show in a school, there should have been this level of outrage. It should have been at this level. Where are people's priorities here? France is having some problems during the Olympics and not because of this particular opening ceremony, but because God doesn't like the whole event, honoring and giving offerings to other gods. That's why there is always problems with the Olympics. France, Paris is a total mess. Don't let the pretty lights and Eiffel Tower fool you. I would rather walk down the dark alleys of Brooklyn than Paris. Crime is high, rape is out of control there. They have to give women safety courses if they want to travel there. Did you know that these Olympics are policed by the French and Qatar, the Islamic police? Did you know that? Did you know that the athletes are having a hard time getting food since they wanted to push plant-based diets on the athletes this year? They wanted to reduce their carbon footprint of the Olympic event. These athletes are not living under great conditions there. The trains in France have been attacked with arson. They had anti-Semitic groups walking around the Olympics looking for Jews. I'm telling you, France has been a mess for some time now. I don't know how they agreed to host the Olympics knowing that they would have all these problems to top it all off with the wrath of God. They had a power outage. You know, that's what happened one time with Mardi Gras or somebody gets shot at Mardi Gras. It never fails. Something bad happens. A hurricane, maybe. Anyway, I think I covered what I wanted to cover here in the time that I wanted to cover it. And I'm glad to see people finally standing against this debauchery on a broader scale. This won't be done away with until these fallen angels are done away with. But until then... Stay away from these things that have to do with other gods. Don't spend your money. Don't give it your observance. Don't let people scare you with phobic rhetoric. If you truly stand by God, then stand by him and speak up or walk away. Other than that, I want to thank everyone for watching. I have links for a recommended video up on screen and in the description and comment section below. Everyone have a great day and think about what was presented here. Really think about it. We all make mistakes and we shouldn't hate people. You can hate the things they do, but remember God loves us all and he gives us all a choice. And in the end, we will take care of this mess. Take care and until next time, friends, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe. And I'll talk to you all soon.